All right, welcome back to season three of our show. It's winter time and it's short room time. We're gonna show you how to get these barbecued up, right in your home broiler without even stepping outside. So stick around, don't go anywhere. All right, so today it's short rib. We're teaching you how to do this right in the comfort of your own home without even stepping outside. So right here we have some short ribs, about seven pounds. And short ribs are a very tough item to cook. They got a lot of cartilage in there. They got a lot of muscle in there and it's just a very tough piece of meat. And if you cook these down, they'll cook down for probably in a pot about three and a half hours to four hours it would take to cook this piece of meat down. So today we're gonna to show you how to get this done in about an hour and have a beautiful barbecue meal. First thing we're gonna do is get our rub on. We got some bay leaf right here. We're using a pressure cooker today, so we're gonna put this in the pot early. We're going into our pot. We're gonna start off with our rub with a little salt. I don't put much salt in my rubs because you can always add salt later on. Just a little bit of salt, some black pepper, garlic powder, onion powder, paprika. It's a real good one, Hungarian. So you want to use that. And some cumin powder. Now everything, feel it out to your taste. We're going to give this a shake and a little stir. And just get it mixed up in there. Now let's just get these guys out of the way. I always put my lids in front of me so this way I never forget what was what. All right, and here we go. Just stir it up good. Now you can make this in advance. It'll last in your cabinet nice and fresh for about a week. And if you're gonna make a lot of it, don't do that because it won't be fresh. And everything you put on your meat, you want to be fresh. All right, that's over there. Very simple. Just go right on with it. Now because this is going in the pressure cooker, and we put the water in there and the liquid, a lot of this is gonna come off, which is okay because you want the flavor. And we're using a pressure cooker because it uses just a little bit of water and you want to keep maximum flavor and you don't want all this stuff to just go off into the water. And then you're gonna lose that nice flavor. So let's turn these over. And the other side is bone, but we're using the other side today, this side is meat, this side is bone. We're using the other side today just because we want maximum flavor inside the water. So normally, if I was cooking these on the cooker, on a smoker, I wouldn't go both sides, I just do one. So I'm just gonna take this, and just lightly get some of the sides in the back. Like that. All right, now we're just gonna rub them in. And into the pressure cooker they go. Just rub them around. And then they go. Make sure you rub the sides and pick up whatever's left over on your tray. This way nothing goes to waste. And there you go. Just like that. How simple is this? It doesn't get any more simpler than this. And the flavor that comes off of here is 
ridiculous. It's a great amount of flavor that comes out of here. Finish up the rest. Okay, now we got those down into the pressure cooker. We're gonna add some liquid right into the middle. We're gonna go about halfway up. All right, light those on. This cooker maxes out at 50 minutes, so we're gonna go its entire 50 minutes with it. And then we're just gonna hit the start button. That's it. 50 minutes in here, and we're gonna meet you back here, show you what to do from there, so stick around. Don't go anywhere. All right, along with these short ribs, we're making a quick Jack Daniels barbecue sauce. So let's show you how to get this done. What you're gonna need is some Worcestershire sauce, molasses. This is the base. We're using ketchup today for the base. Great base of any barbecue sauce starts with tomato base. We're using Jack Daniels and we're using that rub that we made. And here we've got some sugar, brown sugar. So let's go in with the ketchup right on top of the brown sugar. And you're gonna need a good amount of this. So there's our base. JD, good amount of that to taste. We're going in with some molasses. It's gonna be a real sweet sauce. Every one of my barbecue sauces is different. I mix them up, and this is the rub that we made, so we're gonna go in with a real good amount of that. Matter of fact, we're gonna use it all. And the Worcestershire sauce, or Worcestershire or whatever you like to call it. We're going in with a good douse of that. We're gonna mix it. And then onto the cooker we go. And we're just gonna season for taste from there. But this is the base of it. This is what it all starts with. And we're gonna just gonna cook it down. So this is what I do. I get it ready before it goes onto the cooker. Then I just go from there. So just get it all stirred up. And the funny part is if you taste it, it's gonna taste completely different, not cooked, then cooked down. And you're gonna serve this warm. I'm gonna stir it. And I'll just go from there. And onto the cooker we go. So we'll get this cooked down and we'll meet you onto the cooker to show you any adjustments that we do to this. So stick around, don't go anywhere. All right, so we heated this up and we let it come right to a simmer and then we pulled it and cooled it down. The only thing I could use in here is some honey because it's not sweet enough for me. Now when you make these things, you just gotta keep tasting it as you go along. And if you want like a family barbecue recipe, you just gotta have to write it down, everything you put into here. Two ounces of this, four ounces of that. Now, I've been behind the wheel of a stove and a barbecue for over 30 years and I don't write down anything. And every time it's it's different. Sometimes it might be a little bit spicier, saltier, sweeter, zestier, and that's just what makes barbecue barbecue. You don't get the same thing every single time. So in all the years that I've been making sauces, I don't write down anything. And that's it. So we're gonna just smoothen this out. And you want it about that consistency. That's what you're looking for, just like that. That's barbecue sauce. All right, we'll get this off to the side and we'll meet you back here. Show you how to get this onto that meat. Stick around, don't go anywhere. 
All right, pressure cooker's done, time to pull them. Here we are. Now I pulled these at about an hour in. And I just want to show you this. I want to show you the texture of this meat. You can see that? It just will pull right off of there. That's the way you want it. So it's firm enough to handle, but you can pull that right off of there. And your teeth will go right through that. So you have to be very careful taking them out of their liquid because at this point they're very fragile. And when they're fragile like that, you don't want to mess up your food. Alright, so let's get them all in here. Now I'm using this aluminum tray today because we're going under the broiler with these. We don't want to mess up any other vessel because we're going to paint them up, make them nice and stick them under that broiler under some high heat. And with the barbecue sauce and painting these up, it's going to stick to something that you love. So don't do that. Otherwise you're going to be stuck with a heck of a cleanup. We want to make this as convenient for you as possible and easy. You don't want to be stuck with it. A big cleanup after a meal like this because you won't be able to move out the chair. So if you got some kids around the house that they can clean up, by all means, but if you don't, use the aluminum. Alright, so I just want to show you how much this yields. Now I got these on sale at $6.99 a pound, so I really couldn't leave them on the shelf. For short ribs, can't go wrong with that. few more in here. And when they're in the pressure cooker, you just want to feel around and get them. And try not to grab them by the bones. Because the bones will kind of let the meat loose. So try to grab them by the meat. Alright, I might have Lost one off the bone, so I'll show you what that looks like and how tender they are. And I believe we have one more to go. So at this point, you don't have to get your oven or anything ready because we're going under the broiler, and the broiler just takes seconds to heat up. So the nice part about this meal. It's going to give that nice barbecue taste and flavor in there. And you don't have to heat up your oven. It costs you a lot of money in the winter time. And I think that's about it. I think all of our meat is off the spindle. And at this point, we're ready to show you how to glaze these up. So here's our barbecue sauce. It's not a glaze actually, it's a, it's a sauce. And that's the consistency that you want that at. So this is cool, and now we're gonna go on top of these. Like that. And the nice part is you can handle them now and you can get them nice and painted up now instead of fussing with them while they're in the cooker. Now before I learned how to barbecue stuff like this, long cooks, this was always my go-to. So when I was in my teens, believe it or not, this was it. By the time I hit my 20s, I was making full-blown brisket meals on the cooker for hours. But I always resort back to this because 
you can't go wrong with this. Especially if the weather's bad and you just want to get something done quick. This is it. All right, so I'll just drizzle it over. This may look like a little bit of food, but it's really not. It packs a punch. I think my big ticket for this was about 40 bucks. So how do you go wrong? I take this over filet mignon any day. And then you can leave a little bit of sauce off to the side for those that want to add some more sauce. So again, I never use barbecue sauce, but we've got no smoke flavor, so this is it. And in a way, sometimes you might get tired of the smoke. And this is a great alternative to giving the smoke a break. So I enjoy my wintertime cooking as well too. All right, so we got these all painted up. They look pretty. There's plenty of sauce on there. And under the broiler, we're going. So we'll meet you right back here. Stick around, don't go anywhere. Into the oven we go. I got this broiler on high and we're gonna get that nice and toasty. Now you don't wanna cook them. You just wanna get all that nice and toasted up. You wanna grill them. So now basically you're grilling them. I could put those on the grill and turn them down on the grill and it would be the same exact thing but the only difference is there's no broiler on the grill so you're going to ruin that nice coating that you have on there. So this is why broilers always come in handy. Stick around. Don't go anywhere. Alright. Now you see that bubbling up at the top? That's what you want. We're going to get them nice and crispy and then we're going to pull them. But that's what's going to make that flavor in that sauce is that if you don't crisp them up and burn them up with that sauce on there you're not going to have good barbecue indoors so I can pull them right now but because that sauce is not going to be nice and charred up it's not going to have that flavor so we're going till we get that char and we'll see you right back here when we're ready to eat stick around don't go anywhere All right, here we are, season three's chopping block. Let's see what we got. Look at those. Now these came out of the broiler, and like I said, I made that top nice and crispy. And we're gonna just grab one and go right into it. Just so we can show you the inside of this, show you how tender this is. So the first thing we'll do Yes, let's get it off the bone. Look at that, it just pushes right off. And then we're going to go straight through. Look at that. Can't go wrong with that. It's even got a smoke ring. Let's give that a little pit master taste. I'll show you how that breaks apart. Just, ooh, it's hot, but very tender. Wow. That's excellent. I tell you, for you guys that try this, you will not be disappointed. All right, let's plate up. Show you what this looks like on a plate. slide these off to the side. Now what we did here 
we made some beans to go along with this. Some nice Pitmaster style beans. And we'll leave a link in the description to these beans being made. So this way you guys get to see this. Nice cannellini beans with bacon. This is one of my favorites, especially winter time. It's got bell peppers. And it's just a beautiful dish. Alright, we're gonna put that there. And bring that right over to that board. And then we're just gonna garnish that a little bit. A little bit of green onion, which is already in there. It should never go wrong with too many green onions. Alright. Played up with some of these beautiful short ribs. All right. I think we'll just put one more on there. Just add to the bunch. Garnish this with just a little scallion on top. And plate there. Can't go wrong with the scallion. Let's just clean up here. And there it is. All right, we're gonna get situated and we're gonna meet you right back here. Stick around, don't go anywhere. All right, and there it is, a beautiful indoor barbecue short rib. Can't go wrong with that dish. What a beautiful southern bean on the side. If you like this video and more videos are about to come, please don't forget to hit that like. Hit that bell, this way you get all those notifications first. And don't forget to subscribe. We enjoyed you, loved having you, and until the next time. Gotta get that little bit faster taste there.